It's not just the state government that's letting down Victorians. Look at how Melbourne Council thinks businesses should be treated. There is a report into how a second safe injecting room in Melbourne CBD would work, and those who could have their whole lives and livelihoods affected by it aren't allowed to see it. Melbourne City Council on Tuesday blocked a motion to release the report to the public. This means that after two years of fighting COVID measures, including six devastating lockdowns, restaurant owners owners in the CBD don't know if they're soon going to be sharing the pavement with crowds of drug addicts. Joining me now to discuss this is Victorian Shadow Minister for Mental Health, Emma Keeley. Welcome, Emma. Let me play devil's advocate here and say the, the activists say these facilities save lives. So why do you oppose this safe injecting room going ahead in the CBD? I think what we need to do is just to go back to the evidence uh, around North Richmond. We've seen it absolutely plagued with so many issues, Rita, mm. uh, whether it's the staff dealing drugs to the people injecting <laughs> uh, in the facility, whether it's about the impact on the amenity or even just the impact of the tragedy of being more overdose deaths in the immediate vicinity of the injecting room. It's just been a disaster. Well, it has. I mean, and that particular injecting room is next door to a primary school. So the, the fact that that is defended so vehemently by Labor and the activists it seems beyond belief because we've had innocent children negatively impacted by, by that centre's operations. Um, but why aren't the businesses around this uh, area being told what the government is planning. I mean, this report was supposed to be released before the state election, but now we're told it's going to be released after the November poll. Yeah, that's right, Rita. It was originally supposed to be released before the end of 2020. Uh, it was extended once already to the end of 2021, and now we're in a position where Andrews again is keeping Ken Lay's report completely secret from traders and businesses who would be so heavily impacted by the troubles that are plaguing the North Richmond injecting room. Uh, it's just typical of the secrecy that we see from Daniel Andrews and this Labor government, and People should be listening to the businesses and traders. They should be able to have their say. But most importantly, they should be able to see that report before the election. And uh, there's talk that the government's already bought the old Urella building on Flinders Street. And it seems to be the worst kept secret in town that that's where they're intending to put this facility. Uh, if that goes ahead, what's it going to mean for that area? That is a big tourist hub uh, and uh, right opposite Flinders Street Station. Yeah, you're right, Rita. Uh, it, really, it's the gateway to the city. It's the uh, the gateway of where Flinders Street Station, which a lot of people enter into the city in that area. It's, of course, next to the beautiful De Graves Street, uh, which is that iconic cafe street that we see used in tourism adverts uh, mm -hmm. for overseas. And to put an injecting room right next door where people who've just injected would then walk out into a laneway directly into uh, and to Graves Street, which is just packed full of uh, tables and chairs and people having coffee, families uh, enjoying brekkie. It's just not the right place for it. And it's not the place where there are issues with drug use on the streets in Melbourne CBD. Now, today we learned that the Suburban Rail Loop, a project that was supposed to cost $50 billion to complete, is going to cost $125 billion just for the first two stages. The cost blowout here is enormous. Uh, the state budget is in some peril already. Can the Liberal opposition, if they're elected in November, do anything about this? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the Liberals and Nationals have made a commitment that we're going to shelve the suburban rail loop project, um, particularly around the Box Hill to Cheltenham line. Uh, now, this train line doesn't serve an enormous amount of people, but it comes at a significant cost where we're hearing that just that first leg of the project uh, could cost in excess of $50 billion. Now, the Liberals and Nationals think that we could... It'd be nice to have that project. Look, we've, there's always nice things to have, Rita. I'd love to buy a Pacific Island, uh, but I can't afford to do that at this point in time, and the same should go for the government. We need to put the money where the immediate crisis is, and that's fixing Victoria's health system, which is in absolute dire straits at the moment. 
And uh, what about the, uh, your leader's uh, troubles? I mean, we've had the controversy with his chief of staff. We've had a number of people leave his office in recent weeks. Uh, is he secure in his position? Uh, Rita, I'm actually the deputy leader of the National Party, so I don't get a vote on uh, leadership in the well, Liberal Party. Well, I'm sure but you've heard the rumours. <laughs> Well, I, I think actually this week has been enormously buoyant. Uh, we've got positive news where we're making a commitment to uh, scrap a train line that's enormously expensive. We've made a commitment to fix the rail, the hospital crisis uh, and put the healthcare needs of Victorians first. And I think that there is an enormous amount of confidence at this point in time. Uh, we've been working hard to plan out our policy announcements over the coming 100 days. And with things like future injecting rooms in the city, we're getting down to a real point where Victorians will be able to make a decision. What do they prefer? Uh, do Emma they prefer Keely, to uh, we've an run out of room time. In the or not? But I thank you for your time this evening and thank you for giving us some clarity around that important issue.